Look what it has in its mouth. It's a Texas rig. Let's get it back in the water. All right, thank you, buddy. Go get bigger. So this is what I caught it on. It's a simple little Texas rig, weightless Texas rig. I'll show you guys how to set it up at the end of the video. Let's go catch a couple fish, and then I'll explain a little bit more about it as we go. So I'm throwing the setup on my Cast King MG12 and my Asegi Freestyle. This is a um, 7.6 medium heavy fast, and uh, it does throw up to one ounce, from a quarter to one ounce, and it holds 10 to 25 pound test. So you can kind of gauge that. I just want a little bit more backbone because these fish, what they'll do, especially in this lake and anywhere where, where you have this uh, Eurasian milfoil, they'll grab the bait and then dig themselves into the weeds. And especially bank fishing, you're gonna get that a lot. You're just gonna have to pull them through the weeds once you get them. So I like to use a little bit heavier, medium heavy rod and then a little bit longer just to give me a little bit extra backbone when I'm pulling them through the weeds. If you're gonna be fishing open water, you can actually go down to a seven foot medium, something like that. And for the line, I use a uh, Seaguar 12 pound test. If I go down to the medium one, I just go down on this one as well and go down to a 10 pound test. All right, so you're gonna cast and you're just gonna let it sink. What I usually do is I'll just watch my line. I'm just watching my line, making sure that it's kind of sinking the way that it always sinks, and uh, there's no like weird movement. And if it does something weird, oh, I just got another one, nice. Oh, did I lose it? Oh, I lost it, dang it. So right there, it looked like there was a bite, so I kind of moved it just enough so that I could feel it with the rod so I'm gonna let it sink again and a lot of the times these fish are holding in these spots so I'll just cast right back in that same spot now this is mostly weedless the stick bait that I'm using is the yum dinger and it has this little little like channel where the hook fits in there they last a little bit longer than the Yamamoto's, but I do like the Yamamoto's just because they sink a little quicker. And it all just depends. These uh, yum dingers don't sink as fast. Sometimes the fish like them to go slower. Sometimes they like them to go faster. Uh, I usually start with the yum dinger. If I'm not getting any bites with the yum dinger, I'll switch over to the Yamamoto just to, just to make sure I'm not missing any fish. And I'll just go back through the same exact spots. And what'll happen is I'll fish the bank. Like I'll go around, didn't catch anything. Come back, grab a Yamamoto, fish the exact same bank and maybe catch two or three fish. And even if I fish this and I caught two or three fish, I'll come back through with the other bait and I'll catch one or two more. And it's just that for some reason, some, some of them like it when it sinks really fast. Some of them like it when it sinks a little slower. You just have to play with it a little bit more. So I'm just kind of working these seams. I can see that there's like a little pocket right here or right here. There's a little pocket. There's a couple little pockets over here of spots where there's no weeds. So I will just throw in there. And a lot of the times what these fish are doing is they'll be sitting right on the edge of the weeds waiting for something to go in there. And then I'll just lift up, let it come down, and just keep watching. There's a fish right there. Nice. And just like that, right at the top of the mouth, just how I like it. I don't like them to swallow it. So if I can, if I can set the hook fast, I'll set the hook fast. Don't let them eat it, because if you feel it, they have it in their mouth. A nice little largey. 
get bigger, buddy. And usually about the second or third fish, they start getting a little tore up. So I carry a bag with me of the yum dingers. And once it starts getting tore up, I'll change it up. I'm going to cast one more time and just see if it's going to it's gonna move around right. You can feel it. If it starts spinning on you, usually that's when I'll change it. Yeah, see, it's still good. Oh, yeah, we'll just work our way around and see how many more we can catch. Another good spot right here. What I really love about this bait is how, how many different applications you can use it on. So I can come here to this weedy area and fish and try to catch some largemouth and then I can go to a really clear weedless lake and catch some some smallmouth on it and the only difference that I would do is if I'm fishing a, a lake that is clear and uh, doesn't have as many weeds is I would just add a little bit of weight it broke so I'm gonna use it as a wacky rig for a little bit and then I'll switch over right here is pretty open open water so i'll just switch over to the wacky rig and throw it out there just so i don't waste any any baits as you can see it's one of the most simplest setups that you can use so if you're a beginner and you just want to just go out and try to catch some bass for the first time all you need to go buy is a bag of stick baits and some hooks and these are just the regular warm hooks. I think these are three aught. You can use three aught or four aught hooks. I personally prefer the owner or the gamakatsu. Both of those are really sharp, but you can even use some of the eagle claw. Like if you're gonna use a trocar, just the regular eagle claw that you find at Walmart works really good so you end up spending you know especially if you're starting off you're just gonna go buy those two things you already have some kind of rod and reel combo which you don't have to go get this one you can just find something if you have anything um, it's most likely gonna work to just get you out there the whole point is to just get you out there get you catching fish so you can enjoy yourself. But you're probably not going to be spending more than, you know, maybe $10, $15, depending on which, which worms you go with. Because I think the hooks, there's a fish. I think the hooks are, uh, are, get this one in <sighs> nice sweet there's another one thanks buddy wacky rig is like that just makes it come down a little bit different But as I was saying, the hooks are probably going to be about three, four bucks, and the worms are probably going to be about eight dollars. So yeah, you're looking at, you know, unless you get some young dingers, I think the young dingers are about four to five dollars. So you end up spending like, you know, ten bucks to be able to come out here and fish. I mean, that's worth it. All right, so I cut the head off of this because there was about you know that much that was broken because that's where the eye of the hook was so i cut that down a little bit and now i can keep using this worm and the cool thing about it is that channel is still pretty long to where i can get right at the end of it come down and boom there it is i can still keep using that worm all right let's get another one
And they'll keep doing this. They'll keep curling up. And you just have to adjust it almost, you know, every couple of times. You can put some super glue on it. I don't like to put super glue because it just starts gumming up on my on my hooks. So I just leave it like that. I have enough on here. I usually get the 30 pack of the Yum Dingers. Just buy them at on Amazon. I'll put the link down below to the Yum Dingers. Um, also put, put a link down below on the Cast King stuff. You guys want to hit that and check it out. I'll link the Yamamoto's as well, just so you guys can take a look at them. And they might be actually a little bit cheaper in Amazon. And as far as colors go, depending on the water, if I see way out there and I can see down pretty low on the on the weeds, then I usually start using natural colors. I'll use like a uh, like a green pumpkin or some kind of black, black and blue, something that's more natural. If uh, it's pretty murky, pretty dingy, ugly water, I might use a black or I'll use like a brighter color like a like a pink or an orange or something that's going to stand out a little bit more to the fish. There's some kind of, there's a fish right there. I don't know if that's a bass or a trout. They put trout in here. bluegill are spawning so every once in a while you'll see a bass just crash the bank because they're all just sitting on the edge on their little beds Move to the next spot. You can see the little bluegill. Put a bunch of beds down here. Bass will come in and just crash into them. Like I got it. Oh, there's one. Oh, get him. Come on, buddy. Oh, he went straight into the weeds. Oh my gosh, he's like way in there. I might lose this fish. I have to give him a little bit of. Give him some line to get himself unstuck, and he got me unstuck. There he is. Yeah. Sweet. And he dug himself in there real good. That's why you need that medium heavy. Get this hook out of him. Looks amazing. Toss him away from the bluegill. Oh no! He was gonna grab one. Like I said, that's why you need that medium heavy. I knew I had him pinned against a bunch of weeds. So all I did was I just lowered my rod down and I let him kind of swim back a little bit. And once he swam back, I, get, I pulled it back again. I could have lost him, but I mean, it was either that or breaking off and giving him my hook and everything. And don't really want a bass swimming around with a hook in its mouth. Just chasing each other. It's so funny watching these fish. They are hilarious.
so nice to be out here so early in the morning. Hear all those sounds of nature and that kind of stuff. But as corny as it sounds, it's one of the things I adore the most. cats this way and uh, then we'll move Well, I hope you guys learned something from all this. And I hope you can apply it in your next fishing trip and catch a couple of bass. If you like this video and you want to see a couple more how-tos on different rigs and setups, go ahead and comment down below what you want to see next. And um, I will definitely get get to making a video for that and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button let's go show you that setup okay here's a quick setup pretty easy so you have your hook this one is a owner offset four out hook and it's a worm hook so when you go look for them just look for the worm hook and a four out and it should say offset on it. So then you have your yum dinger. And I'll link both of these down below so you guys can find them easily. So you'll find the channel right here. So you'll you'll have to come in from the bottom of that. So you want to come in. I usually go in a little bit past the barb. Then come out. Just like that go all the way in should be if you do the little bit past the barb you'll get that which is what you want because if you have a weight on here when it comes down it's gonna slam on the bait it's gonna mess it up down here so you want it to be a little bit below that the eye of the hook and that way when the weight comes down it's not slamming on the actual bait so then you're gonna go underneath get the half point and then you're just going to come out of the channel just like that. And there it is. It's pretty simple. So you can bury this a little bit more. If you come in a little bit more of an angle. Um, so if you come in just a little bit more of an angle right here. It'll kind of hide this a little bit better. I can try to show you. So instead of coming straight in like this. Come in a little bit further back. And then go like this and that hides it a little bit better see how that one's a little bit more hidden so if you got a lot of weeds i suggest coming in at an angle instead of coming in straight up and down if it's kind of wide open like like i said if you're fishing open water or you're fishing kind of a rocky area that doesn't have a lot of weeds uh, you can just go straight up and down on it the last thing that i was going to say is if you're going to have a weight on here i would tie the weight first let me go grab one real quick all right, so here it is. It's just a bullet weight, bass bullet weight. This one is a an eighth or a quarter ounce. You want to go as light as possible when you're fishing around rocks. So if you can get away with an eighth ounce, I would suggest doing an eighth ounce. If you can't get away with it, go to a quarter or move up and up until you get as deep as you want. Obviously, the heavier you go, the deeper you're going to be able to fish. So if you're going to put this on, you would put this on first, cut the line, slide the narrow end in first, and then this is the butt end, this is the end that I was saying that would butt into that. But yeah, pretty much there it is. Pretty simple. 
you know, it just doesn't get any simpler than that, a hook and a weight. And the last thing I was going to say is for these, you can use a stick bait, but you can also use any other kind of bait that you want on a, on a Texas rig like that. So I have a fluke. So you can rig a fluke. This one I have because I use the screw in ones, but you can rig a fluke like that, or you can rig just a creature bait, just like this one. Just rig it up like that. So as long as you have your hook, you can just start buying as many different kinds of plastics that you want and just go from there. So anyways, thanks for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.